Today I'm going to experiment with a brand new idea on my channel, so bear with me on this one. I've been doing landscape photography around the world for the last 10 years, and during that time I've had the honour and the privilege of visiting some of the most beautiful and photogenic locations in the world. But I'm only relatively new to vlogging. Um, I only started actually doing video work around the turn of this year. So unfortunately, most of those trips that I've been on, I've never managed to actually document through vlogging and through video work. All that I've got is what's up here and what I managed to capture on the camera sensor. So my idea is that I'm going to share some short videos where I basically share my insights my experiences and my photos at some standout locations. The first location that I'm going to look at is Deadfly. Now that name may not ring a bell, but I almost guarantee you've probably seen it. And if you haven't... Now, this place is situated in Namibia, right in the middle of the Namib Desert. Essentially what it is, is it's an ancient lake which once sat in this location and the climates have long since changed. So the waters have long gone and essentially what's been left there is kind of a white pan, a white clay pan, um, which sits amongst these fiery orange sand dunes that go, go all around it. And what you've got studded throughout this clay pan is, are these ancient trees that have long since died and the combination of that white clay, those beautiful dark, almost black skeletal trees coming out of it, the fiery orange sand dunes and the beautiful deep blue skies above make for an absolutely amazing photographic location and arguably probably one of the best photographic locations in the entire African continent. Logistics is absolutely key when visiting Deadfly. <laughs> So obviously it goes about saying the best times to take pictures at this location is sunrise and sunset. But this presents a big problem because it's located in a national park and those national park gates only open around dawn and dusk. And if I remember correctly, I think that's 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. when I was there. And those gates are about 68 kilometers away from Deadfly. So you can absolutely forget getting any decent pictures by staying outside of the park. You're gonna put yourself under way too much stress and you're gonna actually miss the best of the light. To get the best pictures at Deadfly, you have to stay within the national park. So when I visited Deadfly, I stayed at a campsite right next to the park gates and I got up at about 4.30 on the, on the morning of my visit um, and set off on my drive. Now the 68 kilometers to the location is mostly on tarmac road. So that drive took me about 50 minutes, but the last few kilometers are actually on really bad sandy tracks. And um, I don't think I did my research properly at the time, so I wasn't anticipating it. So I ended up having to ditch my car, my two wheel drive car at the, um, the first car park and I had to walk the last sandy stretch. Now, don't do this. That sandy stretch takes a long time to walk and luckily I only walked for about 10 to 15 minutes before I managed to actually hitchhike the rest in um, a car that was going past a four-wheel drive car. But yeah, either get yourself a four-wheel drive car to do the whole journey that will take you all the way there or um, be prepared to do some serious walking through the sand. <laughs> when you get to that final car park, it's like a 1.1 kilometer away and you've got to hike through the sand to get to Deadfly. Walking through the sand can be quite slow going, so that 1.1 kilometers can take 15 to 20 minutes to actually get through properly. But here's a key, key point, and you've got to make a decision when you're at Deadfly. You've got to choose whether it's about the experience or is it about the photography. <laughs> And this is a key junction I find. And at the time, unknowingly, I picked to go with experience, <laughs> but I'm giving you the information so you can make that choice when you get there. Essentially, you have to follow the posts and that will take you to Deadfly. But from what I remember, they're quite difficult to follow, but generally you just follow where all the footprints are going. But to the left of Deadfly Pan, there is a large sand dune that rises up. And that's where a lot of people will go first 
to watch the sunrise, which rises off to the left-hand side. You can't see the actual sunrise from Deadfly Pan itself because it's surrounded by high sand dunes. So when I visited, I went to the top of this sand dune, watched the sunrise there, which was amazing. And then I slid down the sand dune right into Deadfly Pan at the bottom and started shooting immediately. This was beautiful because it gave me that beautiful sunrise over the desert and it was just a fantastic experience. But it did slightly compromise my photography because obviously I didn't have time to scout out my compositions before the best light had arrived and it kind of made the whole experience quite stressful. I was running around um, like a blue ass fly. I think you have to go into it with an open mind and it's a really overwhelming location. It really is every direction you look, there are potential compositions at, at short range, wide angle shots and long telephoto shots. And I think the key is to just take it easy and just try and put your own stamp on it and don't try and emulate shots that you've seen other people do. Just, yeah, just try and enjoy the experience. Positioning is absolutely key when visiting this location. So you'll find that the sun will rise to the left-hand side over the sand dunes there and will firstly illuminate the sand dunes and the trees out to the right-hand side of the pan. This means the logical place to first start shooting is out to the right-hand side and then gradually change your compositions to follow the sun as it tracks across the pan. By doing this, I feel, it allowed me to actually maximize my shooting in the best light conditions. Another really important consideration is you're probably not gonna have the location all to yourself. There's gonna be a lot of other people. So generally, I'd avoid walking too far into the pan. Not only are you gonna annoy other people in compositions, but actually I found that a lot of the best compositions were right when you first entered. You didn't need to go too far into the pan. For me, there were two key things that made some of my images stand out more than others. The first one was shadows. You've got to, when you shoot there, not only become fixated on the trees, but try and think of the shadows that they cast across the white pan floor. For me, my favorite shot that I took there, which is hanging just up here, was all about the shadows. I shot into the light, I positioned the branch of the tree just over the sun to take the harshness out of the actual light, and I allowed the shadows to cast themselves across the foreground of the shot. For me, it was far and away my favorite shot. The other thing to keep in mind is that the, the floor of the actual clay pan is not uniform. There's some bits that are quite boring, but there's some bits that are quite textured and defined. For me, trying to find that texture in the pan floor really took the foreground of my shots to another level. When I was shooting, I first started with a wide angle lens and I went in for some wide angle shots of the trees. I tried to get some close up shots of the bark to add a sort of different slant on things. And then afterwards, I shifted to the telephoto lens. Now, a key consideration is a lot of the trees aren't actually positioned that close to the sand dunes. So I think telephotos work extremely well at this location. From a distance, you can effectively pin the dark skeletal trees against the orange sand dunes to get those iconic shots. Before you'll know it, you'll find that the sun has risen too high in the sky and the best light has gone. But don't despair, you'll find that a lot of tourists leave at this point and move on, and perhaps the photographic potential has diminished greatly. But it's a beautiful location to actually just put your camera down and just appreciate where you are. My conclusion is that ultimately, you can't get great shots of this location by only visiting it once. I feel you probably need to visit it twice or maybe even three times to get the very best. So I'm not gonna blabber on too much about this location. I think I've given you some of the, the highlights and some of the knowledge that I've managed to remember about my trip. So yeah, I hope it's uh, proved useful. Um, I'd like to hear your feedback on this video format. Is this useful? Am I just blabbering? I'll let you decide, let me know. Um, if you've enjoyed it, then I'll rack my brains and think of some other iconic locations that I've had the privilege to visit, and I'll bring you some more videos on that soon. Until then, goodbye.